Crisis Radio, Webster Tarpley in Washington. Now, um, the one other thing that would have to be said about um, about Ukraine, there is a political faction which has shown itself to be uh, bloodthirsty in the extreme, absolutely ruthless, and uh, somewhat centralized with uh, significant stocks of relatively modern military equipment. If we go back to the beginning of May, I believe, we will find the massacre at one of the government buildings in Odessa, where uh, anti-fascist elements were trapped in this building, and the fire was set, but the, the, the building was big and old and stone, and the fire was not what killed these people. It was rather death squads that went through the building. These were pro-Kiev, pro-fascist death squads who then killed large numbers of people, 50, 60, 100, we don't know, naturally, in the complete indifference and cold disregard of the uh, controlled uh, prostitutes here of the West. But the guy behind that is Kolomoisky. He is, uh, among other things, the uh, the local boss of Dnieper Petrovsk, I believe. He is a fantastically rich oligarch, and this Kolomoisky, with his hand, <coughs> oh, excuse me, hand, <coughs> hands dripping with blood from the uh, Odessa massacre, has assembled something called the Dnieper Battalion. The Dnieper Battalion of Kolomoisky. And these characters apparently do have these surface-to-air missiles, um, maybe Book, maybe Sam-11. These may be the same. They may be different. They may be a mixture. Whatever it is, Kolomoisky looks like a good uh, suspect for this stuff. Now, of course, when we look at all this stuff, we got to think back to uh, to Sarajevo, right? 28th of June, 1914, the thing that blew the lid off the world. Although, not immediately, only after a month. And you'll also remember, as I tried to stress, it's not Sarajevo per se that gets you to World War One. It's the investigation and the Austrian ultimatum concerning the form that that investigation will uh, will take. So um, we have to think about the obvious parallels, and I've tried to cite uh, some of the, uh, the material about this, and I, I now have gotten my hands on one of these pieces. You'll remember uh, Charles Henry Norman of the British Independent Labor Party wrote about his experiences on the 28th of June, 1914, in downtown London, when various uh, bigwigs came to him and said, uh, have you got any news from Sarajevo? Answer, what's Sarajevo? And then the guy goes off raving, I hope they didn't screw it up. I hope they didn't blow it. And uh, and then later a uh, well-connected lady says, uh, uh, what they're saying at the newspapers is that this is the signal for the big European war, which a lot of people didn't think, right? The... Uh, the Austro-Hungarian uh, royal house, just to speak for them, said, why Why should this have any political consequences? Right? We have anarchists killing people all the time. Of course, it was more complicated than that, but um, you get the idea, right? To know right away that that's the signal for the big European war indicates a degree of insider knowledge. That was not at all obvious in retrospect. So this... Um, this interesting essay by Charles Henry Norman called Grand Orient. This, all, this is in German only so far. We hope to do something about this. But Grand Orient, incidents on Sunday, the 28th of June, 1914, in London by C.H. Norman. And this is published in an interesting publication. This is called Berliner Monatshefte für internationale Aufklärung. And that's Berlin monthly um, issues, right? Monthly uh, monthly notebooks, monthly uh, volumes for international enlightenment. And this is essentially a publication set up by the German government to try to refute the war guilt clause of the Versailles Treaty. So in here we have this entire story, right, that this was awaited. Now, in other... Uh, in other uh, the sources that I found now, we also find that um, there was 
in the Austrian press in Vienna during the war. Now, this may, you know, you could say this is war propaganda. I don't know. But it's interesting that the, uh, let's see, the Vienna... New the Vienna Neue Presse, the Neue Presse of Vienna, um, um, talks about uh, the Russian ambassador in uh, in Belgrade, right in Serbia, and he says that in Saint Petersburg, the Russians were waiting for the news of the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand several days before it happened. So this is from the Vienna Neue Freie Presse, New Free Press, 4th of August, 1916. So not only in London were they waiting, but apparently also in St. Petersburg and Paris. I don't know, but it may well be. So you get the idea, right? These were uh, not uh, sociological phenomena. They were coordinated. So um, this is now the... uh, the situation. When we talk about Kolomoisky, just to get back to him for a second, Kolomoisky comes on the scene, Ukrainian scene nationally, as an ally of Yulia Tymoshenko, the kleptocratic gas princess that we've talked about, right? NATO asset. It's also interesting that Kolomoisky seems to be the contact man for Hunter Biden. Uh, Hunter Biden, of course, the son, one of the two, one of the sons of. Uh, Joe Biden, our uh, vice president, and that uh, Kolomoisky also has the contacts or has contacts to Saakashvili, the tin pot fascist of Georgia. So Kolomoisky, this is now an interesting sociological study. I urge sociologists to get to work for a change. Uh, And in this case, Kolomoisky as a warlord, right? This is now a warlord of the 21st century. With this, you know, large uh, dimension of international connections and and God knows what.